Okay, I am continuing my series on Python for physics educators. So these are the kind of things that you could do in a physics course, introductory physics course. Uh, I'm kind of aiming at the calculus base level, but you could adapt these for other things. And on top of that, you could actually not be an educator. You could be a student. And I welcome you. Okay, <clears throat> we are looking at... I'm in the second semester looking at electricity and magnetism. Uh, all my videos on this are in a playlist. The link to that playlist will be down below. And today we're going to look at the magnetic field due to moving charge. Now, this is one case where visualizing it in vPython in, um, is really useful because the magnetic field due to moving charge is three-dimensional and you can't get any way around it. Okay, so suppose I have, and I'm not going to go over the physics, I'm going to focus on the the, the Python. Uh, suppose I have a charge right here moving that way with some velocity q v. Actually, the velocity is v, but the q does matter. And I have a vector location of that. I have a vector location of where I want to calculate the magnetic field, uh, r o for observation location. I can find this vector r from that point to here, and then I can. Uh, that's that vector r. The magnetic field is. Uh, created for, or described with this equation. B is the magnetic field, mu naught over 4 pi, just a constant. Then I have the cross product of QV and R hat. So R hat is a unit vector in that direction. And this is what makes it three-dimensional. Okay. Uh, and then divided by the magnitude of that distance squared. So the just to be clear, uh, the cross product is, is really done with Python, it does a cross product, so it removes a lot of the complicated stuff around. Even if we have uh, some strange vector locations of these things, it can do it no problem. Um, okay, so I think let's just jump into there and, and make this. I'm going to make a charge. I'm going to actually put it at the origin, even though it doesn't need to be. Uh, and then we will calculate the, uh, the magnetic field. And what I'm going to do is to represent the velocity with the vector and the magnetic field with the vector. Uh, remember, there is this arrow function in, in uh, GlowScript vPython. Uh, one of the things is that it draws an arrow where you know the position and the axis of the, the vector location of that. But that's a space arrow, right? Because everything's in spatial coordinates. And so I'm going to need to multiply both the velocity and the magnetic field by some scaling factor so that they'll appear to be a, a nor a normal length, which is really dumb because they're not lengths, right? So we're really just kind of making it look nice. Okay, um, let's just pick uh, a charge. Q is uh, 6 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs. I'm just making up stuff here. Uh, the velocity is going to be equal to, <clears throat> let's make it come out of the page, 0, 0, um, 2, 2, 2 meters per second. I don't even know where I got that from. Uh, and then for the magnitude of R, uh, let's just put the, the magnitude of R is, oh boy, how about a 10 centimeters? So 0 0.1 meters. Okay, let's jump over to Python and get this working. Python, okay, here we have Python. I am using uh, GlowScript vPython, it's what I always use. Uh, this is an online version of Python that has all the modules built into it and stuff so that you don't have to install anything, you don't have to import anything, it's just ready to go. You do need this line up here, GlowScript, but but that's that's in there. And just, just I, I skip over this sometimes. If you're in Trinket, you can go to uh, New Trinket and you want to do GlowScript, okay? If you do Python 3 or Python, it's not going to have those modules built in, so you need GlowScript. Okay, let's just jump right in here and make some things happen. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is just KM. KM is going to be 1 times 10 to the negative 7. This is my uh, magnetic constant. That, this is mu naught over 4 pi. But I don't want to write mu naught and 4 pi. It's just one constant all together. So I'm going to call it KM where the M for magnetic. That's just what I do. You can do it the way you like it, but that's what I'm going to do. Okay, now I'm going to make my charge. Let's just make that... Um, I'm going to call it ball. I don't know why. Uh, so it's a sphere. It's going to be at the origin. Make this a little bit bigger. Uh, its radius is going to be equal to uh, 
Um, hmm. So if I'm 10, let's try a centimeter. And let's not give it color. We're not going to move it so we don't need a trail. And let's just run it right there. Just make sure everything's working. I don't know why it's going to work. That's fine. Okay, so there's my sphere. Uh, Python zooms in so that we can see everything. Now let's go ahead and make the velocity. So I'm going to say uh, ball dot v equals vector uh, zero, zero, and what did I say it was? Two twenty. Where did I get that number? Two, two, two. Uh, and that's all fine. But now I want to make an arrow to represent that velocity. So I'm going to make this v scale equals uh, 0 0.01. I'm just picking a number. I'm going to pick a number and display it. I'm going to draw this arrow, and if it looks bad, I can change that scale. V arrow is an object of type arrow. It's going to be the beginning of the arrow is going to be at the ball. So position is ball.pos. And then the axis is going to be equal to V scale. And you got to spell it right. Okay. Times ball.v. So it wants a vector value, and I'm giving it a vector value. Ball.v is a vector. And then I multiply by that scalar's V scale, it's still a vector. Now I need the color. Let's make it red. Color equals color.red. And let's run this thing. Okay. So you get a pyramid. Although it's not a pyramid, it's actually an arrow. So, uh, Oh, it's giant. Okay, so you can't even see my ball. So let's make this a uh, smaller. Let's make this zero, zero, one. There's, uh, it wants to be smaller even. Okay, zero, five. Okay, that looks, that looks pretty good. Okay. <clears throat> now, I d I'm not even going to put an object a sphere where I want to calculate the magnetic field. I just want to calculate it. So let's do this. Uh, R equals vector. I want to make it 10 centimeters. I'm going to put it 10 centimeters on the x-axis. So let's just say 0 0.100. Now I'm going to calculate B. B equals km times, now I need to do Q, oh I need Q. So let's do up here, ball.q equals, what did I say? 6 times 10 to the negative 6. <clears throat> so this is going to be the cross product of QV cross R hat. So I can do this all in one step. Watch this. I can say cross. It's a built-in function in Python. If I give it two vectors, it takes a cross product of them and returns the resultant. And that's pretty awesome. So it's going to be QV, which is ball.q times ball.v, comma, the other vector, which is R. No, wait, I want to do R hat. So R hat is also a built-in function, norm R. So I can do this nested function stuff in here in Python. It really makes it useful to type out equations because you can just type them the way you see them on paper or the way that you think about them. I like it. All of that needs, it's, it's mu naught over 4 pi, got that. QV cross R hat, got that. Divided by the mag of R squared. So mag is also a built-in function in Python that returns the magnitude of a vector. So done. Let's just print this out. Print B. Okay, so there's my magnitude of my magnetic field. And the one thing you'll notice, it's in the y direction, which is what you would expect, because uh, you can use the right hand rule coming out. Is that my right? That is my right hand, but it doesn't look like it to you. Okay. Um, it has a very, very tiny value. So that 10 to the negative eighth is important. If I want to make the uh, the vector, you know, a centimeter long, I'm going to need a B scale, something like uh, 10 to, let's try 10 to the negative seventh. So let's say uh, B scale equals one times 10 to the negative, no, times 10 to the seventh. Let's just try that. <clears throat> now I'm going to draw an arrow. So B arrow equals arrow. Uh, location is going to be equal to the position is going to be equal to R. That's where, and, and so in this case, I'm kind of cheating, but I really want to just make a representation of the magnetic field. Normally, I would have to have RO, but RO is R in this case since my charge is at the origin. Axis is going to be B scale times B. B is a vector, so if I multiply it by that axis, that B scale, it's the same thing. And let's make it yellow. Color equals color dot yellow. And let's, oops, you got to spell that right. And let's run this. Okay, that looks pretty good. I actually want my magnetic field a little bit smaller. So let's do uh, 6, 5. 
That made it half as big. Ooh. No. Yeah. That was good. <clears throat> okay. Now, I, one of the things that, you know, you can see that these are in two different directions. Uh, but what I want to show is the pattern of field around that. I want to make a circle around that whole thing. So what I'm actually going to do is to draw, calculate the magnetic field, and then move R and redo it. Okay. So I'm going to use my trick of, of I have did this before, where I take uh, R as a function of theta, and then I just increase theta. So let's do this. So let's do um, theta equals zero, n equals eight. That's how many pieces I want to break it into. D theta equals theta divided by n. Now I will say while theta is less than two times pi. That way I'll go all the way around the circle. I don't need a rake, so I don't really care how fast it goes. And so what I'm going to do is to indent all this stuff. And then I'm going to, uh, before I forget, I'm going to increase theta. Theta equals theta plus d theta. And it, because if I forget to do that, what's going to happen is I'm going to just keep doing this loop forever and ever and ever, and it'll never get done, and then that's not good. Okay. So now up here, I also want to do this, r equals 0 0.1, and now I'm going to write my vector r as r times cosine, cosine theta, sine theta. So cosine theta, now that gives me my x and y components of my uh, r vector in terms of that angle theta. And then as I increase theta, it can just go all the way around. Uh, so each time, though, I can do that. And R tells me, the capital R tells me how far from the thing I'm going to make it. So now I'm going to calculate the magnetic field. The B scale is the same. I'm going to draw the arrow. All that's the same, right? I'm just going to make another arrow. And then I'm going to increase theta and do it again and again. This should work, uh, but I'm just doing it off the top of my head, so it might not actually work. Okay, let's try that. Uh-oh. Theta equals theta plus D theta. Something went wrong. While theta is less than 2 pi. Oh man, I messed up. R theta equals theta plus d theta. Oh, I know what I did wrong. Theta, this should be 2 pi divided by n. Okay, let's see if I can just, uh, oh, I messed up big time. Okay. Um, let's see if I can kill this can't. Okay. Well, we're starting over. I'm just going to do it real quick. Okay, so I had km equals 1 times 10 to the negative 7th. Uh, ball equals sphere. Uh, POS equals vector 0, 0, 0. Uh, radius equals 0. 0. 0.01. That's what I said. Uh, I left it blank. Uh, ball dot v equals vector uh, zero zero two 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 uh, v scale. I said was what did I said that was. I said it was zero point zero 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 one. I think I did. <clears throat> now v o r equals vector. Uh, I'm going to do this as uh, r equals zero point. 0 0.1 uh, v scale, oh, I did that. v arrow equals arrow, pos equals vector 0, 0, 0. It's a review, right? It's okay if we're redoing everything, it's a review. Um, axis equals uh, v scale times ball dot v, color equals color dot red. Let's run that. I should have saved it. I didn't save it to my own fault. Okay, that's too small. Uh, let's make that uh, one too many zeros. Now that, that looks a little big. Let's do, I can't remember, did I do that? I think I did. Okay, that's that. Okay, so now I got R. I got theta equals zero. Uh, D, 
n equals 8. d theta, here's where I made my mistake, is 2 times pi divided by n. Duh. That was a big mistake. Um, okay. While theta less than 2 times pi, theta equals theta plus d theta. Okay, got that one in there. Uh, <clears throat> so the first thing I'm going to do is calculate r. r equals r times vector cosine theta, sine theta, 0. Now I can calculate b. b equals km times cross product cube, oh, I don't have q. Ball dot q equals 6 e negative 6. And then I'll say cross product ball dot q times ball dot v mat norm r divided by mag r squared. And then, oh, I need b scale. Let's put it up here. Uh, b scale, what did I say? It was uh, 5e6, I think I had. So now I can make the arrow b arrow uh, equals arrow position equals r, axis equals b scale times b, color equals color dot yellow. Okay, I think that one's gonna work. If that, now I'm gonna save it this time. Actually, I'm gonna run it because I'm that I'm I'm that daring. Got it. Ha ha ha. And that looks really good, right? Uh, and you can see. There's your visualization of the magnetic field around a moving charge. And I can move that charge wherever I want. You can see, you could replace a ring uh, more along the axis. You can make a bigger ring. Actually, let's see, uh, let's do this. Uh, B field due to moving charge. Save it. Uh, and let's do, let's just repeat this whole thing right here. And let's increase r. That's what we'll make two rings. So I'm going to say r equals 0 0.15 and then repeat that whole thing. So now I'm going to have two sets of rings. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. You can see the magnitude of the magnetic field is smaller, and you can see what the shape of that pattern around space looks like. I'm pretty happy. You know, this is one of those things that I, I like to keep these handy because when I talk about magnetic fields in class, I always need... A, a visual of this that you can rotate around so students can really see and they can also use the right hand rule put their thumb in the direction to see the direction of the field this is it's hard for them to visualize this and I think this really does help uh, them visualize the magnetic field around a moving charge okay so like I said the playlist is down below the link to this code is down below uh, and I'm gonna keep making more stuff I got a whole bunch of things we want to make so that's it